everybody. So in today's lecture, I am going to talk about the biomagnification. So what is a biomagnification? Please have a look. So biomagnification means increase in concentration of concentration of toxicant with increasing trophic level. With increasing trophic level, the level of this certain substances or the toxicant they increases. For example, a very good example I have mentioned over here that is a DDT. Now initially, let us talk about the water cycle. Uh, sorry, uh, a normal uh, uh, cycle or the food chain I am talking about. So, in a water, suppose a DDT concentration is 0 0.003 ppm. In the, in the water, the phytoplanktons will be present. The phytoplanktons in them, the DDT concentration was seen to be 0 0.03 ppm. Zooplankton, the concentration was higher than phytoplankton. Small fishes, the concentration was much higher, that was 0.5 ppm. In large fishes, it came out to be 2, pp, 2 ppm. In the fish eating bird, it came out to be 25 ppm. So, this is what we call it as a biomagnification. So, what is a biomagnification? That means increase in the concentration of toxicant with increasing trophic level. This is the first trophic level, second, third, fourth and fifth trophic level. So, what has happened? The toxicant is being increasing because these fish eating birds, they are not fe feeding on a single large fish. They are feeding on the multiple fishes in a pond. In that case, a concentration of these toxicant present in their body, they will be much, much higher. So, a very good example today we have is a DDT. That is the reason DDT is banned in our country. Now, another example of these toxicants are the first, the DDT, second is Eldrin, third is Dieldrin. Not only these chemicals, not only these pesticides, in fact, there are certain other heavy metals also which causes bioaccumulation. They remain in the body of individual for a longer time and once they are fed upon by the organism present at the next trophic level, they get accumulate in their body. In that case, we have another example of a mercury. We have an example of a lead. Not only these certain radioactive substances, they are also biomagnificant. Radio active substance. So, one of the example of a radioactive substance is strontium 90. Strontium 90. DDT, eldrin, dieldrin, mercury, lead, radioactive substance like strontium 90. Now, what is the reason behind their accumulation? Now, reason is because they are because they are non biodegradable and fat soluble. They are non biodegradable and fat soluble. That is the reason they get accumulate within the body of organism. Now, what are the consequences of it? That it also leads to, let us take an example of a DDT and it is seen that this DDT has reduced the level or it has reduced the metabolism of calcium. So, in birds, DDT reduces metabolism of calcium. Now tell me when there will be less metabolism of calcium in that case it will lead to the thinning of shell which shells 
egg shell egg shells and what is the second consequence it leads to premature breaking of egg so if there will be premature breaking of eggs or there will be thinning of the egg shells then what will happen the population of these birds they will be greatly reduced so this is an overall effect of biomagnification or you can say these are the effects of water pollution so what are other different effects of water pollution the first biomagnification as you can see the second is decrease in the bio uh, biochemical oxygen demand De increase in the biochemical oxygen demand and decrease in the dissolved oxygen and the third one is eutrophication that is algal bloom that sometime there is sudden increase in the population of these algae so that we term it as a algal bloom because of release of these sewage release of nitrate release of phosphates in the water body is it clear to you so eutrophication i'll be discussing in the next session So till then take care keep watching thank you so much students for watching this